Dear learners, I am Dr. N. Johnson, Assistant Professor working in the Department of Lifelong Learning, Ayogappa University, Karekudi. Welcome to this NIOS studio. Today, we are going to discuss about the interaction of the school with the government agencies. Dear teachers, I would like to ask you one question. Whether the interaction of school with the government agencies is essential or not? Do you think over is it essential? Yes, it is. Of course, it is very much essential. A school cannot function without the government agencies. A school and the government agencies, there should be an amalgamation of both school as well as the government agencies. That should be a cohesion of both these two factors, school as well as the government agencies. If the school and government agencies are clubbed or they are moving in a cohesion state, definitely the strengthen for the school shall be achieved, the quality of the school shall also be achieved over in turn. Now let us discuss about what are the various educational laws and policies, how it has been launched over for the development of the school and what are the government agencies are helping out for strengthening of the school. The, there are various educational laws and policies which have been launched for the improvement in education in India. The National Policies of Education 1968 and 1986 and the Program of Action 1992 was committed towards universalization of primary education. Interactions of school. There are various examples of interactions of schools with government agencies. Interactions may be for creation of annual work plan and budget, receipt of grants, monitoring and support to the schools, collection and use of DISC data, recruitment and trainings, etc. Some other important agencies are NCERT, NCTE, NCPCR, SCERT and SCPCR. We will discuss all those organization in detail in the coming lecture. Now let us confine our attention to the creation of annual work plan and budget by SSC. The Sarva Siksha Abhyan envisages need based and participatory learning as per the section 21 of the Right to Education Act, a school management committee should be constituted for all the schools except private unaided schools. Uh, SMC is expected to create a school development plan that forms the basis of the grants received by the school. What this SMC means that is school management committee and next factor is that the receipt of the grants for its effective functioning a school receives various grants from the Sarva Siksha Abhiyan. They are teacher grant, school grant, school maintenance grant, furniture and libraries, teacher grant. The details are below to facilitate the child centered joyful classroom. And what is the amount which has been allocated? Rupees 500 per teacher per year in primary and at upper primary stage. Next comes school grant. This to be spent only by the village education committee and school management committee. The details, the replacement of non-functional equipment and for other recurring cost. What is recurring cost means? The daily routine activities to be done for the school, for the development of the school the cost incurred on daily basis that is recurring cost and the amount is rupees 5000 per year per primary school and rupees 7000 per year 
for upper primary school. School maintenance grant to be utilized only through SMC as well as VEC. The details annual maintenance and repair of existing school buildings. The amount schools up to 3 classrooms are eligible to a maximum of rupees 5000 per school per year. Schools more than 3 classrooms are eligible to a grant of rupees 10,000 per school per year. Next comes the furniture. The procurement should be done by the village education committee and the school management committee. The details are furniture may be provided to the existing government upper primary schools which is already do not have the furniture. The amount rupees 500 per child in government upper primary schools as a one time grant. Next comes the libraries, the details. Provisions is available only for government schools that already do not have a library. Amount rupees 3000 for primary school and rupees 10,000 for upper primary school as a one time grant. Next comes monitoring and support to the school. Each block education officer should have a contingent team of assistant education officer who should be expected to undertake at least two visit to every school every year, collection and use of DISC data. What is this DISC data means? District Information System of Education is a school based statistical system. It was initiated by the National Institute of Educational Planning and Administration in 1995 with assistance from UNICEF. It provides school based data on variables such as enrollment, boys, girls, SC and ST, infrastructural facilities, number of teachers, para teachers, all the details are being furnished. Are we are be able to know about the setup, the number of existence of the school, namely the facilities or the enrollment aspects. We on seeing the DIEC data, we will be able to have a comprehensive picture. Next comes the recruitment and training. The central government has notified National Council for Teacher Education as the academic authority to lay down minimum qualification for a person to be eligible as a teacher. The District Institute of Education and Training Diet, Cluster Resource Center CRC and Block Resource Center BRC are expected to function as academic resource center. Diets, they do over in service as well as pre-service training, they impart training. Whereas Cluster Resource Center and BRC, they are doing over in service training. Next come National Council of Educational Research and Training. It is an autonomous organization set up in the year 1961 by the government of India assisting and advising the central and state government on policies and programs to improve the quality of school education. As a nodal agency for achieving the goals of universalization of elementary education, it also networks with the state educational departments, universities, NGOs and other educational institutions. The objectives of NCERT to prepare and publish resource materials such as textbooks, journals for schools and teachers, to develop new and innovative educational techniques and practices, to organize courses on training of the teachers. The RT Act 2009, under the right of the children to free and compulsory education Act 2009 
the NCERT has been appointed as the academic authority to lay down the curriculum and the evaluation procedure for elementary education and to lay down a framework for national curriculum. National Council for Teacher Education. It was established in the year 1973 as an advisory body on all the matters pertaining to teacher education for the central and state government. On 17th August 1995, NCTE was given a statutory status under the National Policy on Education which has been formulated in the year 1986. The role of NCTE, the first one is to achieve the planned and coordinated development of the teacher education system through curriculum planning of in-service training programs, monitoring of the training programs, initiation, innovations in teacher education, regulation and proper maintenance of the norms and standards in the teacher education system to carry out the research and training of the persons are done over in NCTE. Then comes National Commission for Protection of Child Rights. The National Commission for Protection of Child Rights namely NCPCR was set up in March 2007 under the Commission for Protection of Child Rights Act 2005. The role of NCPCR? Monitoring of child's right to education. Inquire into the compliance relating to the child's right to free and compulsory education. Advise the educational agencies and other partners in implementing the educational programs. Recommend the measures and norms which are to be implemented by the schools. Then comes State Council of Educational Research and Training SCERT. The main function of this council is to bring the qualitative improvement in the field of school education. What are the activities of SCERT? It organizes in-service training program for teachers, administrators and teacher educators. Implement the new educational techniques and methodologies. Coordinate with diaries and impart the guidance. Develop the teaching learning material for various training programs to get it printed. Coordinate with various State Council of Education, NCERT and NEPA. Then comes State Commission for Protection of Child Rights. At the state level, the State Commission for Protection of Child Rights is the main agency to inquire into the compliance of violation of the child rights. They are expected to be set up to protect, promote and defend the child rights in each state. Then comes the district institutes of education and training. Under the National Policy on Education, NPE, on teacher education, the central government allocated funds to set up diets in October. 1989 to provide academic and resource support at the grassroots level for the success of the various strategies and programs being undertaken in the areas of elementary as well as adult education. The role of DIET to promote universalization and enhance the quality of primary elementary and adult education. Engage the resource persons to conduct suitable programs. Provide academic and resource support to the elementary as well as the adult education system in the district. And action-based research are mooted out 
the teachers are insisted to do action based research and funds are being allocated for them and they come out with an innovative idea and they do the projects, action based research projects. Now, it is also vital to understand or to find out what the district elementary education officer does and what are its role. The district elementary education officer is in charge of the administration of the elementary education. Some of his or her main functions are maintain a record of all the children in their jurisdiction till they complete 14 years of age. Ensure that schools in the districts fulfill the required norms and standards through monitoring and on-site inspection. The functions of district elementary education officer are to oversee the functioning of the schools and teachers in the district, to oversee the appointments and transfer of teachers, rationalization of the teachers, look into the promotion compliance, oversees the recognition of private schools, oversee the medical reimbursement of the teachers and to oversee the grants in aid to the aided school. Therefore, the district elementary officer should have a checkpoints and he should check over at frequent intervals what is happening in the school systems. Though the government are giving or though the agencies, government agencies are strengthening the school, it is up to the district elementary education officer also to do his work at tandem with other agencies. Now, let us recapitulate what we have studied in, the, in this video session. The first is the interaction of schools. Is interaction necessary for the school with the government agencies? We have justified, yes, of course it is needed. The government agencies and the school should be in tandem and then only an effectiveness in school education system shall be brought about. Next, we have discussed about annual work plan and budget receipt of grants, monitoring and support to the school systems, collection and use of DISC data and we have seen about the recruitment and training process and apart from all those things, the most important organization, the government agencies, how they are having a collaboration, how they are mooting out in the school education system, namely NCERT, National Council of Educational Research and Training and National Council of Teacher Education, NCPCR and SCERT and SCPCR and DIET. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Hope you enjoy the session. Thank you.